What's up, everybody? This is Tyler Stephen from 200 Spinning News, and uh, I got a request a while ago for my friend to do a server tour setup. He wanted to see my uh, main server room for a while. It's one of my friends from school, and I never really showed it to him, and he never came over to see it, so I guess this is going to be that video he wanted to see. So, all everything in here, every single piece of this equipment has a very valuable importance. So let's start off. On the outside here, we've got a main cable line that runs in to the house. It comes right there. You've got four connections coming out of it. First one right here goes up to the living room. That's what goes to our TV converter box upstairs. This one right here runs down to this air assist modem, which is equipped with battery backup. This is our main phone line system modem that is actually with battery backup. So if the power were to go out, as an example for this, uh, we do not have battery backup on the uh, wireless handheld phones. But essentially, it should detect that there's a power outage, and the basement, especially this phone, this phone's meant to be used for emergencies. This phone will work during a power outage. And this phone, I actually use this phone a lot, believe it or not, when I'm just roaming around the basement or I'm doing stuff, that phone can come in very much handy. Um, very poor video quality. It should detect that it's got power again pretty soon. Hopefully. <laughs> there we go. Um, so that's what that is. And the other line, being this white one right here, goes all the way around and comes into the server room. Now, it runs over to here, to the splitter, which then splits into two locations. It splits down to this cable box and this M Motorola Surfboard SB611 or 6121 modem. And this modem is not the best. I've had definitely better modems than this. I used to have an old... Uh, used to have an old D-Link modem that would just kick ass. That thing was amazing. It wasn't gigabit, but it definitely was a lot faster than this thing was. But sadly, that modem just died at an old age. I kind of used and abused it. And a mild spill to it, because it was on my desk, and a mild spill with some milk ended up landing in it and shorted it out. So that was the end of that modem. And uh, a couple modems later that were really shitty, I got this one. This one's a good modem. How this works is, this modem goes into this. This splits off to two things, or technically three things. First thing it splits off to is this. This is the main switch that goes to the house. This connects all the main computers in the house. Now keep in mind, this right here also goes to two other things. The second port runs into this. This is my main domain controller, DNS server, file server, you name it, it's that. It's a NAS server, as well as a DHCP server, a domain controller. You name it, it does it. It's that kind of a machine. So, what happens is, this router is not being used. It's not even being used. The Wi-Fi on it is not being transmitted. All it's doing is being used as a port forwarding, port triggering server, and that's it. It does absolutely nothing other than that. This machine handles all of those tasks that this is supposed to handle. You might wonder, well, what are you using for Wi-Fi? Well, I don't normally use Wi-Fi because normally uh, I try to have everything hooked up through Ethernet. As you can see, all these wires lead to all different Ethernet parts in the house. As you can see, Ethernet cables run everywhere around here. There's even cables running here. There's more Ethernet cables hanging down the ceiling over here. Oh, my focus is freaking out. You can see those are all Ethernet cables. So very carefully, you can see that uh, I don't normally use Wi-Fi. I only use Wi-Fi on laptops and mobile devices. My camera autofocus is freaking out. But when it comes to Wi-Fi, my Netgear, I don't even know what model this is, it's very dusty, but this Netgear router, which is a 5 gigahertz router, transmits the Wi-Fi signal throughout the house. And that is very, very fast router. It used to be the main router, but I wasn't able to use the port forwarding correctly on it. So I stopped using it as a, uh, as a router. But it's hooked up to that one as a wireless AP. So that's what that's doing. So anything that's supposed to be transmitted wirelessly off of this goes to that and it gets transmitted. This is an old, old switch. I'm talking old school, man. This is a Hubstack 10-base T-Hub. If you ever remember hubs, there's such things called switches. This is not a switch. This is a hub. This is a very old way of getting internet broadcasted through multiple Ethernet systems. It is also extremely slow. This claims to be 100 megabits. I've never got more than 10 out of it. So I bunch. That's pretty much a bunch of bull. That's ten or not not ten. Uh, hundred megabits. 
But being that it's a hub and it's from the early 90s, I do cut it some slack. I got it for free, and normally this equipment costs a lot of money, and a lot of money that I don't have. When I first got it, it worked a little bit, it worked a little bit, but it had a lot of issues. It kept on going into this crash state where the CPU would conk out. And I didn't know what's wrong with it. I ended up taking it apart, running it through the dishwasher. That solved it for about a month or two, and then it crashed again. So then I took the thing apart, tore it down, rebuilt the whole thing, cleaned it out, and I noticed that one of the ROM chips were completely covered in dust. I cleaned out that chip, put it back in, the system never had a problem since. It's been running perfectly. As a matter of fact, every time something pings on here on the network, as you can see, that's not going to do it now. See, something, a little bit of things are pinging. This uh, CPU light would come on red for a second, would flash red, indicating that it was becoming overloaded in such a simple task. And when the thing, and when it was cont continuously on, it would just overload itself. It would completely spaz out and overload itself. Um, so replacing that with a the ROM chip, basically fixing the ROM chip fixed that whole issue. Now moving back onto the cable box, you might be wondering why do we have a cable box down here? This cable box is actually because Charter Communications a while ago, uh, this that right there, or I had a bunch of other ones connected through there, that used to run to every single TV in the house, and a lot of the TVs were not on converter boxes. And believe it or not, Charter did this fully digital thing where they completely got rid of all their digital analog channels in order to go full on fiber. This was a part of the upgrade that they considered and it would also increase the internet speeds that people had and increased a lot of performance for televisions and all that kind of stuff, being that we have cable. And honestly, I don't see how it would increase speeds, but it actually has, so um, probably because it doesn't have to feed all half analog, half digital through the lines. But it did definitely improve the performance. So what I had to do is, I had to take this really shitty, I honestly hate Cisco. I have a very bad experience with Cisco home products. Their commercial grade stuff is awesome, but their home stuff, I honestly just makes me want to vomit. This unfortunately is not an example of a bad home product. This is actually a pretty good cable box and it seems to work just fine. But this actually runs to pretty much every TV on this in the basement and this side of the house. The cable box upstairs in the living room, which is up there, controls only the TV there, and it was supposed to control a TV in the kitchen that I never hooked up. But essentially, that's what it does. So that's not really much to explain. Basically, you change the channel here, it changes the channel for this TV right here. I used to have a TV in here. There's no longer a TV in here, though. And it controls the TV down here. As you might see up here, this TV is connected. It controls the TV up in Mom's room. It controls the projector in my room. And it also used to control a TV that I used to have uh, out here. I used to have a cable line that ran outside, so when we used to have parties and friends over, I used to watch TV outside. Uh, it was in the breezeway. It was up there. It's, that's another story I'm not get into. So, these machines. You might be wondering, well, I talked more about this machine and what it does as a, an onboard NAS uh, DHCP server. This is a domain controller. So in my house, I have a Windows Server Domain Network. And as you can see, the machine is currently up and running now. I'll go ahead and log into it for you. So I'm going to have to enter my password, so I'm going to put the camera down for this. Unknown or bad password. Oh, again, I'm on a hot streak. All right. This is what the machine looks like, as you can see. This machine is very basic. It used to be upgraded balls to the wall with a Core 2 Quad Q6600, 8 gigs of RAM, and that's pretty much it really. There's not much to talk about. But I downgraded the crap out of it because this machine was being hosted, used as a host machine for Minecraft a while back. I honestly did not like that idea because that means people would be, it would be reducing network performance out of this machine to host the server. So I brought one of my older servers that I commissioned, used that for a while, noticed that it was a dual core machine, it produced performance significantly, and then I bought this machine, an Ultiplex 755 small form factor. This is the first time I've ever owned one of these small form factor machines, and I love these Ultiplex systems. And I know a lot of my friends are not very fond of them, but these systems can be upgraded pretty darn far, and once you upgrade them, they can honestly become pretty good powerhouse machines. You'd be very surprised. This machine has 8 gigabytes of RAM, a Core 2 Quad, Q66. Basically, this machine had all the specs that this thing had, except it actually came with the Core 2 Quad. See? 
This machine has a Core 2 Duo. I'm not exactly sure of the Core 2 Duo. And 2 gigs of RAM. It used to have 3 gigs of RAM, but that I, I downgraded it because there was absolutely no rate for the extra gig. And I'll show you what I mean by it. It didn't need the extra gig right there. See, that's the overall usage of the machine. There's really nothing there. This machine's on main purpose is supposed to be a NAS and domain controller. And the only thing that really needs to be upgraded in this machine is the hard drives because they can act kind of slow. I actually have a I actually have a couple of RAID controllers installed on here. Oh, here's all the drives as you can see. Uh, these, some of these are private drives and whatnot, uh, encrypted because I have important data of my friend on here, and this this is my important data. That I have important stuff on it. No, I do not have porn on it. For any of my friends that are watching this from school, I am not a porn addict, and I'm not. I do not have a computer fetish either. And it's a joke that went around, but obviously it's gotten way out of hand. I have 19 drives, as you can see here, and I have about six of them, and a lot of them are partitioned into different partitions to kind of keep the system neat. None of them are none of them are rated, so which means that if I lose one drive, pretty much my data is gone. And honestly, I don't mind that. I would do on RAID, but the disk controller I have installed in here, I have two controllers. I have the internal Intel one which is currently connected to four hard drives, and I've got a adapted controller. I don't know the model. I can actually look that up for you. Uh, let me see here. Device manager. Let me look this up. I'm sorry about the poor refresh rate. I'll, I'll explain why. Oh, no, it's actually a Dell SAS 6-IR adapter. That's what it is. And, um, yeah, and here's all the dish drives, by the way. See? There's the uh, serial ATA controller. Um, there is a, uh, that adapter is actually meant for storage ATA, or serial ATA drive, so it's kind of different. But, uh, anyway, you might be wondering, well, hold on, why do I have this really shitty CRT monitor? The reason why I got this really crappy monitor is because I actually do not connect to this machine with this monitor. I mainly just have this monitor turned off like so, and I connect to it remotely using Windows Desktop, or Windows Remote Desktop Connector. That's normally how I connect to it. As you can see, it's got... Oh, it's a, uh, it's an e, I think it's a 6300. I don't know if it's an E6300. I have to see. It's a very cheesy Core 2 Duo, though. Very old one from 06, I think. So, yeah. But this machine rarely does anything of the sort. So, let's get on to the second machine. Now, the second machine, it does not, I wish I had a monitor switcher. I do not have that. But what I essentially can do is I can go to, a, uh, I don't know if I put it in the programs. Yeah, I did. I can go to Putty here, hit Run. Enter the IP address, so let me get my hand on here, so I go 192, then just, just the local one, 168.0.1119, I actually am going to have to enter the password, it says login as, I'm going to have to enter these credentials, oops, I did that wrong, I have to delete it. Alright, here we go. So, I'm connected to the machine, it's currently got uh, 126 processes, zero, users logged in zero, and uh, i just got to go ahead and show you this, this is pretty cool. So let's run a simple command called top, which basically gives me an overall, just keep in mind, this is hosting a Minecraft server right now, so just to keep in mind on what it's really doing here, 3.6% being used, that's how much RAM I'm using, I'm only using about 4 gigs. I say, yeah, it's four gigs right there. So I've got three left. I got, or, yeah, I got about three left. This machine has a 300 gig hard drive, which is kind of overkill. I might actually install a server grade drive in there. Reason why I would do that is because this machine is going to, it's not a, it's a Western Digital Caviar Blue, I think. It's a, it's an, it's an, it's an older blue, so it's a good one, not one of those cheap sleazy ones that die on you in the next two weeks. Those things are terrible. But this drive is not a server-grade drive, which means it has a risk of doing a head crash because it's not meant to be running as long as it has. And I'm all aware of that. This machine does have server-grade drives in it. Uh, some of them are. A majority of them are. The boot drive is not, which, yeah, get me right. The boot drive is not a freaking um, server-grade drive, which is really dumb. But I'm going to be doing a massive overhaul to, these, to this computer's drive section. I have to get the money, but when I do, this machine is getting all 500 gigabyte, um, 500 gig, um, drives 
and I'm going to be putting a whole new storage controller into it. I wanted to actually buy a new uh, file server, preferably an actual server machine, maybe an older Dell PowerEdge or maybe an IBM server like Dust and Nudge has for his Minecraft server. I actually might ask him if I can trade him for something with that. I can get him a more powerful machine that probably has more RAM and for that machine. I, I probably would ask him that, but I don't know. I, I doubt he'd actually do that because he does like that server. So that's basically the overall of what this machine's doing. Let me log out of this here. Control Z. I'll log out here. Um, no, we do not want to do that. So this machine is pretty basic. I'll just give you the overall specs of it, as you can see. It's, it's a very basic machine. It's not really running too hot. Uh, very cool running machine. So this machine runs really nicely. It has a massive CPU heatsink. As a matter of fact, the CPU heatsink that's on this is not stock. That's for sure. I have no idea why it's so big, but most 745s do not have that kind of a heatsink. So that's kind of a rarity. I don't know if that was custom upgraded or, or what, but that, that was really weird. I got, I got this machine for free. This machine was 80 bucks, but I got free shipping on it and already included some upgrades, so I was perfectly fine with that money I paid. I'm just going to leave this machine locked and turn off the monitor. And my main network printer. This pretty much just chills in here. Oh, my head just hit the light bulb. This, this printer pretty much just chills in here. It does indeed work. The toner is completely gone. As you can see, the toner is completely gone in this printer. And therefore, I need to get a new toner cartridge. I, I, I mean, like, this is really bad. Look. No toner should do that. So, this toner cartridge is gone. But this, pr and the toner cartridges for these things are like, actually, they're going down. They used to be up to like 500 bucks. But now they're going down to like 150 maybe even $50 if you're lucky. And this, this toner cartridge I got with the machine is, with this thing, is very old. And it's like, putting this crap, I don't know, it's leaking crap, I should probably take it out actually, because it's actually leaking stuff, I don't want it destroying this printer, I got this printer for free from one of my teachers, very cool guy, gave it to me for free, so that's a win, I have two of these things, one's a little bit of a smaller version, but this is the medium version as you can see, uh, I've actually seen like, like three bay versions of these, the extra large editions, which are pretty damn cool, I wish I had one of these, this thing is amazing. You can actually get colored cartridges. This thing only had a black and white in it, but you can get colored cartridges for these things for not as expensive as you might think. Maybe 150. These will go for about 80 to 100. The color ones will go for 150 now. And this thing spews out papers like nothing. The bearings for the motor that drive the thing up do not sound the happiest, and I'm well aware of that. But for a free printer, I can't really complain. And mainly for all the main printer jobs I do, I mainly use the printer upstairs, which is a Dell laser, which is a Dell 1700N laser printer. That prints all the main jobs in black and white, and if I really want to get fancy, I've got, a, I've got like a shit ton of bubble jets. Like, I've got a bubble jet printer in the garage, an HP desk jet, and I've got an HP desk jet uh, in the multimedia lab, and I've also got one in, hooked up in my room. To print so essentially i'm all set really there's nothing else to talk about here so thanks for watching comment subscribe and i'll see you guys later